the 28th chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 17. Okay, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not, not, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, read verses 13 and 14. Read it when you get there. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Okay, go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So we want to thank God for the reading of the law. Because Israel, who is a nation, we read the law every Sabbath day. And had the world read the law every Sabbath day, then we wouldn't have the kind of stuff that's going on in the world. Because the Lord put, here, put us here to keep this in order. Now, we have some empty seats in here. And if nobody's in these seats, why do we have people sitting out in the, in the back? Why don't y'all come on into the congregation? And fill up the seats here. And then if you have, then, and if you still uh, uh, have some left out there, then we'll bring the chairs in here. Put them in one place. <laughs> we got six up front here. We have three over here. Three back there. Let's see if we can get everybody in the sanctuary. Okay, some here, one more left here. Come on up front, we got three right here. Okay, we got everybody in and we still have some empty seats. Because uh, uh, 
I am glad to be here. I'm Brother Bowie. And I don't, uh, 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 and since the pandemic, and when the Lord took me down with vertigo and gave me, gave me COVID-19 twice, that kind of put me out to action for a while. In fact, it even shut the Israeli guard down in Illinois for a while because uh, they passed the law and all of the big churches had to shut down. But I'm back and I'm, I'm glad to be here because uh, at one while that COVID had me and I thought I was finished. But through the grace of God, I'm here. Amen. Now we're going to get right into the lesson because we don't have a lot of time because my crew done got a old on me and they don't want to drive no more. <laughs> so, so I have to put up with running against the clock and I hate rushing. But we're going to see if we can get through this. You know, we, at the Israel of God, we teach the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And brothers and sisters obtain a whole lot of knowledge. We teach from the creation, the born again. And we teach the Spirit of God is in many forms and on and on and on. I tell people all the time, the lesson that you come in on uh, that I'm teaching, you won't hear that lesson again for another three years. That's except for black history. So the Lord has given the Israel of God great knowledge and great understanding. But there's something that's still missing, sisters and brothers, and that is love. And the Lord calls me to put this lesson together because I don't think that we know what love is. So the title of this lesson is Love Sows Peace. It sows peace, not strife and discord. Peace, not strife and discord. Sometime in our great understanding, with all this knowledge, we become perfect. So perfect that we can't give other people room. So perfect we can have people that have flaws that need to be addressed, but instead of us going to the person that had a flaw, we go to somebody else and address their flaw. So the Lord say, showed me that's not love, sisters and brothers. Because if you love your sisters and your brothers, you do everything to make them better and to aid them in what Ever way you can. But we're going to get to this, sister and brother, because, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, 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 special among us Hebrew Israelites. You have a lot in the streets. I look at some of the brothers in the streets. All they're doing is hollering at people, screaming and accusing people, and giving the Lord name. One of his names is Israel. That's why he said, you pollute my holy name. And every time you open your mouth, and your behavior and, 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 and go your day to day life, you are representing the God of Israel, which is the God of the creation. And you should have a presence of mind of your behavior at all times. But we're going to go in the Bible just like well, we're the Israel of God Bible study class. We're going to deal with this because, uh, uh, and we're going to start in Matthew, the fifth chapter. Matthew, chapter five. Because I've heard people, people have come to the Israel of God and said, boy, y'all read a lot of scripture. I said, that's what you have to do when you don't interpret a paraphrase. I don't know what's on God's mind. The only thing I know uh, that's on God's mind is what he has written in this book. So I can't read something and say, well, you know, it means this. It means what it says, sister and brother. And we're going to deal with this because sometimes love is mentioned among us and we don't know it. We're trying so hard to make everybody and, every, and, and ourselves perfect until we forgot that God made everybody a free agent and everybody has to be persuaded and you cannot force nobody. That's one of the things that the Lord has blessed the Israel of God with. I don't try and be a dictator. I just teach the word. Out of all of the Israel of God churches, and we have plenty, you never see written out uh, or written up there, Pastor so and so, so and so. And you never see my name on anything. The reason is, is because I am not important. Salvation is what's important. 
In order for you to get salvation, you have to learn how to love. And the ones that have more knowledge, then more is expected of you. So we're going to start this in Matthew, the fifth chapter, and this is Jesus talking. And we're going to start reading at verse 1, 5 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is called a sermon on the mountain. But what he did was he was teaching his apostles. Mm -hmm. He wasn't standing there teaching everybody. Because what Jesus did when he came, he had to teach his apostles and his teachers again because we had fallen away from everything. Most people don't understand that Jesus even gave a commandment to Israel, go not in the way of the Gentile. Those are the children of Japhat, or Japhat, which we call white folks, sisters and brothers, and go not into any city of Samaria because when the Lord had the Assyrians take out the nine tribes, the northern kingdom, he brought other people in there. What he wanted to do was get his priest in order first because you cannot lead if you don't know nothing. And if you don't have no understanding of the word of God, what are you going to preach? Heard that old saying like, you know, oh, you know, Pastor Jones, he sh can't read a lick, but he sure can preach. Well, what's he preaching? <laughs> like God wrote this book, had this book written for nothing. So now he gave this sermon, and he was, but, it, but it wasn't no sermon on the mountain. He was teaching his apostles because we have to teach the same thing. Let's start back at verse 2. Go ahead. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, uh -huh. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Go ahead. for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now these are people, you, know, you, you watch the poor in spirit, that means you're not haughty and you're not all proud and, and puffed up. Those are the ones going to be in the kingdom from heaven. Because that's the Father's kingdom, sisters and brothers, because of Genesis and Revelation uh, uh, <clears throat> Revelation, uh, uh, the 21st chapter, tell you that this kingdom is going to come to the ground, going to come to the earth. That's why every time you say the Lord's Prayer, you say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And he said, blessed are they that mourn. Mourn for what? You mourn for people that are suffering. You mourn for the world and the condition that it's in. Right. Go ahead and read. Blessed are the meek, uh -huh. for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. What do you mean inherit the earth? I want to go to heaven, brother boy. You'll never get there. <laughs> Even God don't want to stay there. Right. Jesus is going to rule this earth for a thousand years, and at the end of the thousand years, he's going to have a white throne judgment, and when everybody have been changed to immortals, even the people in the lake of fire, then the Father's kingdom, and Jesus is going to turn it over to him, and he's going to bring it down. So if you inherit the earth, you're going to be among the blessed. Because not only will you inherit the earth, you will be in them all also. But go ahead and read. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, uh -huh. for they shall be filled. Go ahead. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Uh -huh. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now this is Jesus talking. And this is a rule of thumb. This is a rule of thumb uh, 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 lesson that he's given here. Try to read these and adopt these characteristics. Mercy. And pure and hard. He's telling you what's going, what your reward is going to be. Go ahead and read. Blessed are the peacemakers, uh -huh. for they shall be called the children of God. And that's what the peacemaker is. He is a child of God because you always want to uh, make peace. You don't like strife. You don't like to see people suffer. You don't like to see people fight. You want to make peace. That's the one that's going to see God. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21, and go ahead. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, uh, uh -huh. Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Go ahead. But I say unto you, the, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the counsel, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. That's a long verse. I say unto you, if you are angry, see it used to be, you know, if you, if you uh, uh, kill your brother 
or did something to him physically, then you could be in trouble with God. But he came and made it harder. He said, blessed are you that are angry. Uh, 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 he's not blessed, but he said, I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Mm -hmm. That's why you walk around, you mad at somebody. What are you mad at them for? They haven't done nothing to you. They may have gotten a promotion on the job, or they might have got a position that you want that you don't have. Or they might get recognition that you're not getting. Now, you're angry at them. Mm -hmm. Why are you angry at them? Because you envy them. You want what they have. So the Lord telling you, you have to watch that. So whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, Raka means worthless. Who can you call worthless? You didn't create nobody. And I hear people always talking about, well, that person, they're worthless. There is nobody on this planet worthless, sister and brother. If you ain't worth nothing to nobody else, you worth something to God. Right. And who are you to judge God's servant? These things, sister and brother, the Lord wants you to see all of these things. And then, and, and, and then whosoever uh, calls somebody else a fool. It is written in the Psalms, the fool said there is no God. Right. What qualify you to call somebody else a fool? These are things we do all the time, but we ain't paying no attention to it. But the Lord take issue with that. I mean, big issue. What verse was that? We have verse 23. Go ahead. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, uh -huh. and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee. Go ahead. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. Uh -huh. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Why should you go and reconcile your brother first? Make peace with your brother because if you're going to offer a gift to God and your heart is not right, you offer a gift for nothing. It don't do you any good, sister and brother. Go and make your peace with your sister and your brother. Then when you come back and make your gift to God, then you can prosper from it. Because there is no such thing as love among enemies. Enemies hurt one another. And you're going to turn around and say you love God? Let me show you what God said about that. Let's go into 1 John, the fourth chapter. Because people say, they, you know, I love the Lord. I hate it all the time, sister and brother, but I watch your behavior. And so does God watch your behavior. Because he is looking all the time, sisters and brothers. And if you are not behaving correctly, he know that. First John, the fourth chapter. See, we can give, we give big lesson. Man created to become God. You know, uh, a power over the nation. Born again. We, we know all of that stuff. But what good is it if you cannot control yourself? You won't be able to reap any of those great blessings that the Lord's going to give us. And I tell people all the time, this is your training floor here. God's purpose is to create God. What you mean create God? God is a unipolar word like man, M-A-N. That's why you say God, but it's two in the Godhead now, not three, two. And like some people say, one with two personalities. Well, that's not the case either. When people tell me, they're always asking the question, then who was God talking to when he said, let us make man in our own image? Wasn't talking about the angels. Angels, you got the cherub angels, have four faces, six wings, calf feet. You, you seen anybody walking around looking like that? Either there's another one in the Godhead or either God is a schizophrenic. That's right. And we don't think he is, sister. Right. Right. So what we got to do is adhere to the word of God. And if you love your brother, then God know it. If you don't love your brother, he know that too. 1 John 4, 1 John 4, and we're going to read verse 7 first. 1 John 4 and 7. Go ahead and read it. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Uh -huh. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. See, now, you have to love, sister and brother. 
You know what the other Hebrew Israelite camps call me? They call me the, 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 the Israelite that want to save the enemy. The white man. I say it is our job to save everybody on the planet. That's, right. That's what we was chosen for. We're the chosen priest of God. Uh, if you caught the Black History series this year, you would know that because we saw that. So now we're supposed to love one another. When you start loving your sister and your brother, and it don't start with your household, it don't start with your race or your nation. It starts with all men because when you go back here, everybody that's living now that came over the flood are the children of Noah. We don't have to go back to Adam. Have to love one another, sister and brother. Skip down to verse 20. Verse 20 and go ahead. Verse 12. Uh, ver I'm sorry. Verse uh, 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. No man hath seen God at any time. Pay attention to this. No man have seen God at any time, sisters and brothers. And we have to remember this. Go ahead and read. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. Uh -huh. And his love is perfected in us. Now, if we love one another... His love is perfected in us because you are a godly person. Now skip down to 20, verse 20, and go ahead. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Now and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. Look, sisters and brothers, that makes sense, don't it? You ain't never seen God. People are, well, I saw God. I, well, no, I, I beg to differ. If you saw anything, sometimes God might send an angel and check you out. He'll do that. But you say you love God and you hate your brother that you see every day, but you don't love God whom you have never seen, that don't fit. It's all that simple. There's sometimes we need to go and find out about these things, sisters and brothers, because if we don't, we are wasting your time. What verse were we at? We just finished that. Okay, you're wasting your time because we need to do this. This is a simple lesson. Some people say, well, it's a born lesson. But I said, if you don't understand what's in this lesson, you can mess around and blow your salvation. Because you say, I love God, I love God. Then you turn around and you're going to talk about your brother. You're going to talk about your sisters. You're going to badmouth them. You're going to defame them. You're going to cause other people to dislike them. And you say you love God? What kind of love is that? Man rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden. And God came, one of the Godhead, which was Jesus, he came and died. Why? To recover this creation. Why? Because he loved us, sisters and brothers. He didn't come to insult us. And you're talking about you love one another? We're going to show you what love is right now. Let's go into Romans, the 13th chapter. Romans chapter 13. Because the Lord have really made the Israel of God a huge church. We are worldwide ministry. We have churches all over the United States, churches in Zimbabwe, Alaska, South Africa, and I'm hooking up a, a, a pastor in this church who want to become a part of us that's in India. We have people in the Netherlands, people in Bulgaria, people in Switzerland, because they want to get this truth. And one of the things they have recognized that we are the chosen priests of God and they're all coming because they want to know the truth. They want to know how to get salvation. That's my only reason for being here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Like I tell people all the time, I do not get paid. Do any of our ministers, Brother Antoine, or nobody in the Israel of God, including Patrick, Get paid. <laughs> so now, if you're in the Israel of God and you're working, you are working for salvation. But you see, these guys take a whole lot of abuse. I take a whole lot of abuse. Why? 
Because I think about the time when I will be just like the one that created me. Amen. And whatever you bring to me, I can take it. Because what a, the prize is worth it. Now Romans, the 13th chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 8. We're going to find out what love is. 13 and 8. Okay, read it. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Uh huh. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. He that loveth one another, another hath fulfilled the law. This is what real love is, sisters and brothers. It is not about patting on the back and giving compliment and, and swapping spit. Excuse me for saying it. <laughs> love is the fulfillment of the law. Go ahead and read. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not kill. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Go ahead. Thou shalt not covet. Uh -huh. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That is true love, sisters and brothers. That is true love. You will do nothing to your neighbor. You won't steal her money or his money. You won't commit adultery with his wife or her husband. Once you keep the commandment, it is love. It is out of love that God gave us these commandments that we would not break them. If you love God, like he said, more than himself, you won't do nothing to offend, you, to offend him. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, you will do, do them no harm. Amen. How many people walk around and bad mouthing themselves to the public? You know, I'm going to go down and do the dog. <laughs> you don't do that. If you won't do it to you, don't do it to your neighbor. Read the next verse. Love worketh no ill the, to his neighbor. That's the key. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Go ahead. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. That's the fulfilling of the law. These commandments are for our sake, sisters and brothers. It's all that simple. Look how easy and peaceful the world be would be if everybody practice commandments. I'm not going to kill you, and you ain't going to kill me, so ain't nobody going to get killed. That's right. I'm not going to steal your money, you're not going to steal mine, so nobody's going to get robbed. I'm not going to lie on you, and you're not going to lie on me, so nobody's going to be defamed. Nobody would have anything to be angry at his brother or his sister about. Right. If you practice this love that God has, for us, and he told us to have. Now let's go into James, the fourth chapter. Because we want to read this, sister and brother. Like I tell people, people get upset. Well, you know, when I tell them, I don't counsel. And I don't counsel. Why do I do counseling? Because if this word of God will not correct you, what am I going to tell you? Get two young people getting ready to marry, and they got them in the church thinking, well, before you get married, you should come get marriage counsel. If you got to go get marriage counsel, then you shouldn't get married. <laughs> what you're saying is, it's over with before we get started. <laughs> and I'm one of them preachers, I will not get in your business. Don't bring your business to me. I'm not going to hear it. How two people in the word of God, and they fighting, and I got to make peace. If the word of God don't make peace between you and your spouse, what is it that I can do? Right. Nothing. And I'm not even going to play with myself. <laughs> James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Because the Lord has given us everything we need in this Bible. I mean everything. So if it's not in this Bible, you don't need it. And we got to learn that, sisters and brothers. Same James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And we're going to start reading at verse 11. 4 and 11. James 4 and 11. Okay, read it. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. Now, that, and that is what is, you, you, that's what is letting you know. Don't speak evil of nobody. Because if you speak evil of somebody, you're speaking evil of the law, and you ain't a servant, you are a judge. 
It's easy not to say anything evil. Like the old saying, you know, I'm from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And one of the old saying, saying is, if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing at all. I'm pretty sure people in my age bracket than heard that. So you don't speak evil of your brother. Go ahead and read. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. And that's what you are. And we're not capable of judging. Jesus proved that. When the Jews brought to him a woman that they caught red-handed in adultery. And they wanted to know we caught her in adultery. What should we do with her? Right away, Jesus saw a flaw with that. But he didn't say who committed, whosoever committed adultery, let him cast the first stone. He said whosoever committed sin, let him cast the first stone. Then he looked down, and when he looked back up, wasn't nobody standing there but her. He said, daughter, where are your accusers? She said, I have none, Lord. He said, neither do I, but go and sin no more. But you know what the major flaw was in that episode? They showed up with the woman, but they didn't bring the man. The law said you stoned both of them to death. So Jesus saw you don't have the fortitude to judge. Right away you didn't came out and flawed your judgment. Because you caught the woman in adultery, but, but she didn't commit adultery by herself. If she is, I'd like to see that act. <laughs> but the man you let go. Go ahead and read. There's one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art, who art thou that judges another? Now, Jesus is the lawgiver. Even the Father had him say, have, had, had him say, uh, had it written, that Jesus is the one going to judge you. He is the one. And he has the right to judge you because he came in the flesh and he died for you. And on judgment day, the Father's not going to do it. Jesus is going to judge you. He is the one lawgiver. That's why he said, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He's the first God we ever deal with, and he's going to be the last God that we're going to deal with because when the Father can bring his kingdom down, there won't be no such species as man. You will be God if you can wrap your mind around that. Because that kingdom, Father's kingdom, he said it, uh, kingdom, uh, uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. What kingdom is that? That is the Father's kingdom, sisters and brothers. So, so when you judge somebody, you're judging Jesus serving. You don't have the right to judge another person serving. Now let's go in the Proverbs, the 16th chapter. Proverbs chapter 16. Because we need to know these things, sister and brother. People think, well, not me. You sit out at night and you take a, a, a real good look at yourself. You'd be surprised. If you put band-aids on every flaw that you find on yourself, you wouldn't have no place. Only place left, probably one eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I tell people all the time, hey, Lord, you know, well, brother boy, you should do this and you should do that. I tell them, look, I was sent to teach the law, not to enforce the law. I have too many flaws. I say, if the Lord can call me in, in the, to the ministry, and if he can save me, anybody can be saved. Because I come out of the world, and I do mean I come out of the world. That's why I do preach as much as I can, go wherever I can, because I'm afraid that the Lord might remember what I used to do. <laughs> and if he do, I want, him to, I want to pile up so many good things over here that my assets outweigh my liabilities. So who am I to judge? Not me. I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to teach you this law. And, and, and plus the Lord told the watchman to warn the people about him, not, from, not about me, about him. Proverbs chapter 27, uh, 16 rather. Proverbs chapter 16, and we're going to start reading at verse 27. Okay, read it. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, 
and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward man so instructs. He said he, he diggeth up evil. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an ungodly man. He diggeth up evil and his lips are like a burning fire. Mm -hmm. Because you're always looking for something ugly to say about somebody. Always. That's not good, sisters and brothers. Verse 28, go ahead. A froward man soweth strife, uh -huh. and a whisper separated chief friends. Now, a froward, sisters and brothers, means that a person is contrary to everything. You know, I mean, he don't find no cleanliness in nothing. He's perverted all the time. All he ever looked for is evil. So hard that if he see good, he don't recognize that. So what he do? He's digging up strife. Go ahead and read. A violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that is not good. Go ahead. He shutteth his eyes to devise forward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. Now, this is a person always, you know, you might, everybody knows some people like that. Here they come. They got, they got something to say about somebody else. I tell people all the time, when people bring you evil about somebody else all the time, then they're going to leave you, and they're going to go take, bring evil about you to somebody else. Seven of God don't do stuff like that. You just don't. The one that's doing the evil, that's the one you need to talk to. Skip down to verse 32 and read it. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Uh -huh. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. That's a mouthful there. If you slow to anger, you are better than a mighty person. Mm -hmm. Because you look at things and you don't get angry on the moment. You know, you don't look at the uh, 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 at the effects. You, you think about what caused this. It's just like a man that have a servant. He's hired. And what happened is, before you fire that person that's working for you, you should think about, do we have a wife? Do we have children? Do we have rent to pay? Do we have groceries that they have to buy? A godly person, think about that. When I get ready to do something to this brother here, I have to think about who else will I harm when I harm him? Godly people have to think about that. Because the same thing that you would have, uh, 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 have people to do to you, that's what you want to have done all the time concerning you. And it says here, and it's a big statement here, the last part of that statement. Read that last part just one more time. Because this is really something. Read it. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Uh -huh. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. You know, rule your spirit, that's trouble. Control your emotion. Don't let them get out of the way. You get mad, you do, then when you cool, ooh, I'm so sorry. It doesn't work like that. You have to rule your spirit. In other words, you have to control your anger. Control your emotions. Think about, if I say this, who is it going to hurt? And where does it stop? That's the whole thing in a nutshell, sister and brother. We don't think up the road. We think here and now. Here and now only lasts a moment. And what you do here and now can affect you the rest of your life right. right. or somebody else. So you have to rule your spirit. In other words, you have to control your anger at all things and at all times. Now let's go into Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Because if we don't, sisters and brothers, we're always putting ourselves on the bank. How many times you have done something and said, boy, I wish I hadn't done that? Mm -hmm. yeah. But the cat's out of the bag now. It's just, I, I will tell some of this young brother sometime, well, man, my wife, I'm, I said, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Don't say something, let something come out of your mouth that you shouldn't say because your wife ain't going to never let you live it down. <laughs> In other words, rule your spirit because 
Your mouth is a real weapon. And most of the time, it's going to end up killing you. Proverbs 6, and we're going to start at verse 16. 6 and 16. Okay, go ahead. These six things doth the Lord hate. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. Hate is a strong word, isn't it? And it's seven are an abomination. That means that's something that's really ugly to him. Go ahead and read. A proud look. Uh-huh. A lying tongue. A proud look. What are you proud of? That's why I tell my Hebrew brothers out on the streets talking crazy and hollering at people. Looking all proud. What are you proud of? God promised you that you could be the top person on earth. You could be the top financiers on earth. And nothing would happen on the earth unless it come through you. But you sinned against him and you got thrown into slavery. So what are you proud of? They offered you a whole bank full of gold and you blew it. Now you walk around talking about other people. Because things have happened to you that your God told you was going to happen to you even before it happened. If you did not accept his proposal. And we didn't. So he said a, a proud look and a lying tongue. Because a lying tongue hurt people, even the one that's doing the lying. Go ahead. And hands that shed innocent blood. Go ahead. And heart that divideth wicked imagination. Uh-huh. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Remember, God said he hate these. Go ahead and read. A false witness that speaketh lies. Uh-huh. And he that saw discord among brethren. Somebody's lying on somebody. Even... Sometimes the truth, you know, you heard, you know, the Bible talks about a tailbearer. People don't understand a tailbearer don't always have to bear a lie. The tale you might bear is the truth. But then, why should I tell this sister something ugly about this sister? If she is doing something wrong, I should go to her. I don't go to her. Because she's the one that had a problem. She's the one that need fixing sisters and brothers. And this we have to pay attention to. A false witness that speaketh lies and he that sows discord among brothers. You some, see somebody always creating a disturbance, always turning one person against another, then we need to look at it. Because I'm going to tell you something. This lie, this tongue, is a detriment to your salvation. And people don't understand that. People don't, want to be, people don't want to be told that. You have to understand. You got all of this knowledge, but you can't control your mouth. Let's go back to James, the third chapter. Like, what good is knowledge if it don't control you? In fact, you are in more danger than anybody else because you know better. And you're still doing it. And you're causing discord and separation between sisters and brothers. Get to the point, people see you coming. Well, a, a righteous person see you coming. There, oh, here you come, or here she come. You be trying to find somewhere to get out of the way because you don't want to hear. Because you get tired of this tongue. Let's see what James said about this tongue. James chapter 3. We're going to start reading that verse 1. James chapter 3 and 1. Okay, go ahead. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Why are we going to, uh, uh, like the people in James' uh, uh, position, and people in my position, and people that are supposed to be serving God, we're going to receive greater condemnation. Because we're condemning everybody, and, uh, and we're killing everybody's false religion, mm -hmm. and then we turn around and do something wrong? We got a problem. Go ahead and read. For in many things we offend all. Uh -huh. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, uh -huh. and able also to bridle the whole body. You know, Nobody's perfect, but you can get real close to it if you can brighten this yes. tongue. Because if you can keep this tongue in check, you can keep your body in check. Go ahead and read. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, uh -huh. and we turn about their whole body. Go ahead. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, 
and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. He can he comparing the tongue with a small thing that control big things. That's yes, right. Go ahead and read. Whithersoever the governor listed, uh -huh. even so the tongue is a little member uh -huh. and boasted great things. Go ahead. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. They talk great things. I mean, everything starts with your conversation. I don't say it. You know, look at a person, you know, I, I thought you was stupid. And when you open your mouth, that confirms it. <laughs> if you don't open your mouth, they don't know nothing about you. Go ahead and read. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Uh -huh. So is the tongue among our members. Go ahead. That it, that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. See what a tongue is? It defiles the whole body, a small member, but it sets in force, uh, sets out the forces of nature. How is it, does it that it's set the forces of nature in operation? Because you, I don't like you, yeah, you don't like me. Uh, you, yeah, I don't like you either. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come over and do something. Come on with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're in battle. Same thing with married people. I've had people tell me, I don't do no counseling, brother, boy, we, I don't know how we got here. He said this, and, and I said that, and he said, I said, that's how you got there. Because <laughs> nobody was thinking. They was just talking, and you saying ugly things. And then it set on fire, and, and, on fire and set in motion the forces of nature. You know what the forces of nature, nature is? That when you get, that's when you get physical now. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden now, Talking ain't enough. I'm going to hit you in the head. All started here. Go ahead and read. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. That's right. Man can even conquer and, 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 uh, 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 and tame a whale. Mm -hmm. they, can, they, they tame elephants. Way bigger than them. But you can't tame this. Go ahead. But the tongue can no man tame. Uh -huh. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Look, you need to realize this. <coughs> it is an unruly evil. It is full of deadly poison. Mm -hmm. Things that are said by people about other people ruin their life sometimes. Sometimes things you say to other people ruin your life sometimes. But you just have to give them, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. You're giving up more than a piece of your mind, if you ain't careful. Go ahead and read. Therewith bless we God, uh -huh. even the Father. Go ahead. And therewith curse we men, uh -huh. which are made after the similitude of God. So you're going to curse a man, but you're going to turn around and bless God, and man is made in the image of God. That's right. So what are you doing? So you cursing somebody that's made in the image of God, but you're going to turn around and bless God. You think God's going to let that go like that? That's why he had James write this, sisters and brothers. You're going to bless God, bless your neighbor too. Mm -hmm. If he don't want to be blessed, then leave him alone. Sometimes the biggest blessing you could do with, for a person is just leave him alone. And don't say anything at all. Go ahead and read. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. Uh huh. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. And it should not, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 13. Verse 13 and go ahead. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Uh huh. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. That's one that's endowed with wisdom, sisters and brothers. Watch what you say. Show meekness. Have good conversation. Just don't allow yourself to get in bad conversation. I just don't do it because I can't fix it. And if I can't fix it, then why should I allow it to come out of my mouth? You just have to watch how you communicate and how you carry yourself. Read the next verse. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. 
and lie not against the truth. And, 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 and if you have been in evil, and you don't, he said, don't lie against the truth. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. For where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. It is. Just like organizations are broken down. They're dissolved. You know, people come. You know, like the Lord made me the head of this great church, the Israel of God. President come and says, so-and-so, so-and-so did this and blah, blah, blah. I don't like I said, wait a minute. What is it that you don't like? First thing is what you don't like is not important. What I don't like is not important. What is the problem? <laughs> Can we fix it? No, we'll just leave it alone. Sometimes the best fix is no fix at all. Just get out of the way and let it take its course. What verse are we? We're at 17. Go ahead and read. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, how can somebody get angry at you if you're easygoing and don't mistreat nobody? Don't say nobody. Angry, uh, uh, nothing ugly to nobody. How can, they miss, how can they be angry with you? It takes two to fight. If you refuse to fight, then what are you going to do? Stand there and hit himself upside the head? <laughs> or slap himself? What they're going to do is they're going to leave it alone. Then later on, they might come back, well, you know, I come to you a little rough. And, and Can you forgive me for it? And you're supposed to be big enough to say yes. But we have to learn that as servants of God, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And that's what's all, if you're going to make peace. You know, can't nobody fight if you won't fight with them. Mm -hmm. You see somebody arguing to have something ugly to say, you say, you know, about somebody, why are you saying this? Well, because they're doing this and doing that. You want them to stop? Yeah, well, why don't you go to them? I don't have a flaw. Why are you telling me? They have a flaw. Go and tell it to them. You go out and you see some brother come in the dungeon on his wife. You gonna go tell his wife? You just busted up a family. And vice versa. Well, brother, you know, if you see a woman come in the dungeon against her husband, you're supposed to tell her, I should show him to her. Mm -hmm. Sister, don't you know this is against the law? This is against God's word. And if she don't stop, I'm gonna turn her over to God. I'm not gonna turn her over to her husband. Because it don't do no good. Who knows, in time, like God gave us time, in time we might see our error, repent, and stop doing it. And then everybody live happily ever after. But that won't happen if you go and tell her spouse or his spouse, leave it alone. It's none of your business. That's God's business. And God can take care of his business. You tell a person, you're supposed to tell them, now you know you, uh, uh, you, 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 you shouldn't do this. God said, I should not commit adultery. You tell the one that's doing it, they shouldn't do it. If they continue, then you just back out and leave it alone. What verse was that? We just finished. Um, so let's go into Leviticus, the 19th chapter. Leviticus, chapter 19. These things, sisters and brothers, this is simple. But we don't think about it. Sometimes we need to get away from this big stuff that we teach and start teaching some of these small things. Because people come, and I mean, we we doing this. Like we just opened up a, a place in Illinois. A lot of white people want us to come and open up a church. Want us to teach them, acknowledge that we're the priests. And say, we are not going to try to teach. We don't want to teach. We want y'all to teach us. We know that you're Hebrew Israelites, but they wouldn't say it to, other, to these other groups. Right. Because they say it to us. Why? Because they can see the love in the Israel of God. They can see that we love our brother, and they are our brothers. We don't hold it against them what they've done to us in slavery, because God is the one that did it to us. I tell people all the time, God told you what, to, what he was going to do to you. He's going to send you in slavery. Somebody else is going to sleep with your wife. They're going to sell your children. They're going to beat you. They're going to bid for you. 
He told us that before it happened. Now when it happened by the hand of a man, because God worked through men, you're going to hate the man. I said, it's just like hating the man, whooping you with the baseball bat, and you hating the bat. This bat is not in control of this thing. The man that's wielding the bat, that's the one that's in control. We offended our God. Because if we had practiced his commandment, then we would have been practicing love then. Because love is the fulfillment of the law. We would have walked right. He would have blessed us. Then the other nation would have looked at us and said, why isn't you guys so blessed? Then we could have, because we keep these commandments. Well, I'm going to do it too. Then everybody would be walking according to the word of God, and God would bless the whole creation. We fell, and we paid the price. Still paying it. You'd be surprised. Leviticus 19, Leviticus chapter 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 16. Because, sisters and brothers, this is simple stuff. We need to deal with the simplicity sometimes. Because sometimes things go on uh, uh, between sisters and brothers simply should not go on if you both are supposed to be servants of God. There ain't no problem that you cannot sit down and work out. There's nothing that godly reason can't solve. Apply this great understanding that you have. Then you won't have dislike. You won't have people talking about people, people disliking people. There should be no dislike among sisters and brothers. I tell people all the time, there ain't nobody on the planet that I dislike. And I mean that. Because I know Wherever you find yourself, something brought you there. Find out what it is so you won't have to go there again. Leviticus 19, let's start at verse 16. Verse 16. Okay, read it. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Uh -huh. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. What's a talebearer? That's a person that's always telling somebody about somebody else's business. People think terror barrel only means something, somebody being lied on. No. That's not. Somebody did something to you and going on about their business and I'm going to go say, did you see that? Did you see what they did to you? No, you go to the person that did it to them and say, you know, you shouldn't have done that. Whatever you took from, you should restore it to them. Because if it can't fix it, why are you trying to? Go ahead, open in your mouth. Go ahead. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Uh huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. What does it mean, rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him? When you see your neighbor doing wrong, you go and rebuke him. This is wrong, brother. You can't do that. This is wrong, sister. You shouldn't do that. Why are you taking advantage of your sister or your brother? You shouldn't do that. You rebuke them and they will repent and you will not suffer them to sin against God. The one that's doing the wrong, that's the one you go to. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Uh -huh. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. He keep telling you that. Who is your neighbor? When you figure that out, you'll be ahead of the game. So we have to control our emotion. We have to control our anger. And we have to control our conversation. If we don't, it's pretty hard for you to serve God, sisters and brothers. Let's go back to James, the second chapter. James, chapter 2. Because it's all about control. Brother tell well, I just can't help myself. I said, you want to be God. You think God is going to make somebody God and give them all power and you can't help yourself? God created you with everything that he got. 
That's why when Jesus come out the grave, he told the, his apostles, he said, all power in heaven and in earth is given to me. And it said in Philippians, the second chapter, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now you think God going to give somebody with power equally healed and they got a tainted mind? I don't think so. Those people he put in the place that's called the lake of fire. Right now, you are supposed to learn how to control yourself. Learn how to control your behavior, your conversation. You have to learn that. Then you will be meek. For God's change. Verse 8. James 2 and verse 8. Go ahead and read. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He keep telling you that. That's the royal law. Go ahead and read. Ye do well. But if ye have respect to, respect to persons, ye commit sin uh -huh. and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Respect to person, that means you let somebody else get away with something and somebody else you will not. You have to treat everybody the same, regardless of their status in life. It's all that simple. Go ahead and read. For whosoever shall keep the whole law uh -huh. and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. See, that's how Jesus caught this guy that brought the woman that committed adultery. He didn't say he did Committed adultery, let him cast the first stone. Right. He that's committed sin, right. let him cast the first stone. Because if you break one, you break them all. This liar is just as guilty as the adulterer. That's right. So you have to keep them all. Go ahead and read. For he that said, do not commit adultery, uh -huh. said also, do not kill. Same God. Go ahead. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. You have broken the law. You can't cherry pick it. You got to do it all or leave it all alone. Go ahead and read. So speak ye and so do, uh -huh. as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. That's what's going to judge you. Go ahead and read. For he, sh for he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. So now if you don't show the mercy, you're going to be judged without mercy. That's why the Lord said in the Lord's prayer, forgive us our sins if we forgive others. If you won't forgive others, then why is it that you, God, how is that God going to forgive you? If you show no mercy, how is it that you expect God to show you mercy? Right. These things, sisters and brothers, we want you to have in your mind. We do things sometimes, and we're sorry. We don't want nobody else to do it. We ain't going to run Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I groped Antoine's wife. <laughs> You ain't gonna go, hey, you ain't gonna go and tell nobody that. But you see somebody else group his wife, you go, Antron, you know I saw somebody grouping your wife. What you think Antron gonna do to that person? <laughs> you go to the person and say, look here, man, you shouldn't have did that. The thing is, that's what you call covering a sin, not giving permission to do it. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're fixing it so nobody will be hurt. Let's go into Proverbs, the 10th chapter. Proverbs chapter 10. Because the Lord had it like this. That's why I have your New and Old Testament to let you know wherever you go, it is the same thing. God knows that if you can fix yourself, then you can fix everything that he sent you to fix. But the fix start at home. Look in the mirror sometimes. Like people always saying, well, you know, the devil made me do it. I said, you know, you want to know where the devil will go? The devil that made you do it? Yeah, go look in the mirror. <laughs> if Satan can make you sin against God at will, then God can't judge you. Because you won't have control over yourself. Right. But the Lord had Moses right. 
what God said. I set before you life and good, death and evil. Choose life and live. So if he lets Satan make you do something against your will, then you're not choosing, are you? He won't allow that, sister and brother. He will not allow that. So when God come at you, that means that you have crossed him. And you have to watch that. Go start at verse 11. Because a person that loves a person seek their good at all times. No matter who they are. Go ahead and read. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. That is. Go ahead. Because you're going to tell people what's good for them. Go ahead and read. But violence covered the mouth of the wicked. Uh huh. Hatred stirred up strifes. Go ahead. But love covered all sins. Now, hatred st stirs up strife, but love covers all sin. What it's saying is if you love a person when you see them doing wrong, you're going to go tell them, don't do that. Tell them the consequences of it. This is what the Lord said he's going to put people in the lake of fire for. But you go to the average church, they tell you Christ loves everybody. I said, that case then, who are these people that are going in the lake of fire? What lake of fire? You mean you don't teach about that too? It's in the Bible. So love, sisters and brothers, covers all sin. Because you, because you love a person, you're going to warn them, don't do this. Because if you keep doing this, the Lord is going to do something to you. So you have to go, sisters and brothers, and be prepared to forgive people. Let's go into John chapter 13, St. John 13, because people need to know these kind of things. Because I can teach big things. If you've been looking at, 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 at some of the things that come out of the Israeli God, you know, we teach about stuff you just haven't heard before. We bring it all out of this Bible. But what good is it going to do you if you don't practice it? You've got to practice it. St. John 13, and we're going to start at verse 33. 13 and 33. Because a lot of people don't like these kind of lessons. Then that is your problem. More of your problem than you think. Because that means that you don't want to practice this. Verse 33. Okay, go ahead. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you. That means he's going to heaven. You can't come. Can't nobody go there. Because he's coming back to here. Go ahead and read. A new commandment I give unto you. That ye love one another uh -huh. as I have loved you. Uh -huh. That ye also love one another. He says, this is a new commandment, but still it's old. Love one another. If I love you, love one another. He gave it up for us. Go ahead and read. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Uh -huh. If you have love one to another. Go ahead. But you, but you have to have it. You can stop there, brother. But when you show love, they say, hey, that's a godly person. You don't have nothing evil to say nothing about, about people. Sometimes we think we're fixing something by saying something to somebody else. You're not fixing it. You're just making it worse. The one that have the problem, take it to them. And if they will not be fixed, pray to the Lord, help them, Master, and go on about your business. The Lord will fix it somewhere down the line. But you don't go and tell this person about it. And you tell that person about it. All of a sudden, you got a group of people hating and don't even know why they hate. It's because you have not, you have stopped being a servant and you have become a judge. Proverbs 17. We don't want to get off in the judgment, sisters and brothers. Proverbs chapter 17. Because it is easy to judge because everybody's right in his own mind. You have to be careful about that. Proverbs 17, and we're going to start reading that verse 9. Proverbs 17 and 9. Because a lot of people have, haven't heard this lesson. Uh, it, I, I don't know. I don't know the last time I did it, but the whole thing is I do lessons in rotation. Whenever we get back around to it, I do it. So you forget it. That's why I tell people take notes and remember.
because you're going to have to chew on this for a while before you hear it again. For me, anyway. Proverbs 17 and verse 9. Okay, go ahead. He that covered the transgression seeketh love. Uh huh. But he that repeated the matter separated very friends. What's it mean when he that covered the transgression seeketh love? Like I said earlier, you see somebody doing wrong. You go, you don't go and tell the person, like I said, you see, see a sister out there committing the doctor on her husband. You don't run and tell him. What you do is you cover the transgression. How you do that? You don't tell him. You go and tell her. Sister, do you know what you're doing? You're committing adultery against your husband. You're sinning against God and your husband. And there are consequences for this. Stop this. But then you don't get a bullhorn and tell the whole world. You spoke to her. That is enough. And a lot of times, people will change it. And some years down the line, everybody, you know you came to me, so and so, and you told me this, and I thought about it, and I quit. Thank you. You didn't take it to my husband. Thank you. Or you didn't take it to my wife. Thank you. And a whispering sisters and brothers separates very friends. You understand? Did you finish that verse? Yes. Go to the next verse. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. So if you got a person wise and if somebody tell you you're wrong, what you're doing, and you're going to suffer the consequences, you stop. But you tell it to a foolish person, they're going to try to turn around and dig something up on you. That's why you have to keep your house clean so when they start digging, they won't find nothing. Go ahead and read. An evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. That is from the God of the creation. You keep persons always rebelling against this and rebelling against God and rebelling against what's going on among his sisters and brothers. Eventually, the Lord going to send a message, messenger him, and it's not going to be to rub his head. Mm -hmm. He's going to send him and he's going to do something to him. Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. And the Lord let you know. You reward evil for good, I'm going to drop some evil in your house and you ain't going to be able to get it out of it. So watch what you do. Watch what you say. Watch how you treat your neighbor and what you say about your neighbor. You don't have to do that. Tell people all the time, you, you out and you talking about this person, that person, but still, this is not going to put food on your table, not going to pay your rent or your mortgage. Why are you saying this? Anything that come out your mouth would be for a benefit. What would you benefit from this? That's why the Lord had this written so people would take it to heart. Let's go into Colossians, the third chapter. Because we just, we don't read these things on our own. You know, this ain't important enough. We want to know about the millennium period. We want to know about God, man created to be God. We want to know about speaking in tongues. You better know about some behavior. Because if you do all of that stuff, it means nothing when the Lord brings you down. Because it said you go, everybody's going to be judged according to their work, sisters and brother. And most work starts with the mouth. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And we're going to start reading at verse 8. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 8. Because the Lord wants us to know these things, sisters and brother. If he didn't want us to know them, then they wouldn't be here. That's why I tell people all the time, how are you going to go to church and your preacher going to read one verse or half a verse and he's going to preach to you for a hour and a half? What have, you told, what have he told you that the Lord said? He read a piece of a scripture and gave you his opinion. And his opinion, without the right amount of money, won't buy you a cup of coffee. You don't need nobody's opinion. You need what thus said the Lord. Verse 8. Verse 8, go ahead. 
But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Put all that away, and your life will be easier, and the people around you will live easier with you. Go ahead and read. Lie not one to another, uh -huh. seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. See, that's the whole thing. You supposed to be a Christian? Oh, Hebrew Israelites say, of course I'm a Christian. We're the original Christian. We're not the Roman Christian, the Sunday Christian. We are the Christian that keeps the commandments. Most people don't understand when disciples, when the disciples was called Christian first at Antioch, there was not one non-Israelite among them. So when they start using the word Christian, he was talking about Jesus' disciples. All Israel, not one. Even Paul had not been dispatched to the Gentile at that time. So you suppose to put off this filthy communication out of your mouth. Go ahead and read. Lie not one to another, uh -huh. seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, that, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That means after the old man, that you, the new man, you, that you, when you repent, you become a new person, sisters and brothers. You're renewed in knowledge. You know now what right is and what wrong is. You know what to do and what not to do. That's what it means, renew a new person. That's renewed in knowledge. Go ahead. Well, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and all. Here's it. It's all about Jesus, what he told us. Go ahead and read. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, uh -huh. kindness, humbleness of mind, Meekness, long-suffering. What's wrong with that, sisters and brothers? Patient with people. Like I see sometimes brothers teach things that in the Israel of God, so I hear them talking. I correct them. Brother, boy, I don't see that. I don't get angry at them. I don't throw them out of the class. I say, you have not grown to this. I'm going to give him time to grow. I didn't learn all the things that I know overnight. It took me some time. Even my repenting was not overnight. It took some time. That's why Paul said you got to grow in grace. Long-suffering. Got to be meek. Forbearing. That means give some people a room. Forgiving people. Go ahead and read. Forbearing one another. And forgiven one another. Uh -huh. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And that's what you have to do. Forbear one another. Give, give them some room. Forgive them from what they say to you. It don't mean nothing. Well, look, I can't. he said that to me 10 years ago. I'm mean, through with it. Right. You ain't through with him only. You through with you too. Because right. the Lord said, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You have to become a servant of God. And that's more than just confessing his name. Let's go into 1 John, the third chapter. Because, sisters and brothers, these things the Lord wants us to know. This is what you need to prosper by. Now, you didn't learn about this good truth. Now, profit from it. And how do you profit from it? By doing it. Watch yourself. Watch your behavior. Watch your conversation. A lot of people, well, you don't need this, brother. Yeah, you need it. If it wouldn't, then God wouldn't have it written. He wants you to know these things. Because he, wanna, he said it is, it is his desire that everybody would come to repentance. So he gave you everything you needed to get there. Verse 10. Go ahead and read. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, uh -huh. neither he that loveth not his brother. Uh -huh. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. He keep telling you that, don't he? Somebody need to listen. Go ahead and read. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. 
See, that's why Cain killed Abel. Cain just got him some fruit off the ground and gave it to God. But Abel gave to God the first and the best of his flock. And God had respect to Abel's offering. But he didn't respect Cain's offering. And he told Cain, so why are you angry? If you do good, don't you know if, if, you, if you do well? I respect you too. But no, instead of him repenting and saying, okay, God, I'm going to do better the next time, he went off and killed his brother out of anger because he envied him. That's why all that strife and, and bad talk and hurting and, and defaming people come from envy. You have to be real careful that you are not a victim of that. Go ahead and read. Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. And that's why he killed him. Go ahead and read. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. So when you start to love your brother, you pass from death to life. Mm -hmm. That's talking about spiritual. But if you hate your brother, like I said, you, you remain in death. That's right. You're on your way. Hatred have no place in the heart of a servant of God. Mm -hmm. None. And you don't even know it sometimes. You, be hating, you don't even know you're hating on the person. But when you sit down and think about it, I said this about the person. I said that about the person. I said all these negative, wait a minute, I must hate him. Otherwise, I wouldn't be always talking about him. Check yourself. Deliver yourself. So when good comes, you, you will be able to take advantage of it. And good is coming. Go ahead and read. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. You didn't know that? If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And the biggest person that you're murdering is yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you're allowing hate to abide with you, sisters and brothers. You cannot allow that. You're only murdering yourself. Let's go into Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs 25. So there's a, I decided, I was, you know, it's, it's uh, see, most of the people in the out of town congregation don't get to hear all of these things that are taught in the Israeli God. That's why I try to get some, I'm going to teach this, and they never heard, heard it. I'm going to teach this. And not always going out all the time. Every time I go somewhere, I have to drop a bomb on you. <laughs> but believe me, this is a bomb too. Yeah. Because it's telling you, if you don't get this thing right, somebody going to visit you. So sisters and brothers, we got to work with, on this thing. We got to work on ourselves. The hardest job that we have is preparing self. It's all that simple. I have to work on me. I can't work on you until I fix me. Proverbs chapter 25, and we're going to start reading at verse 21. 25 and 21. Like I said, this is, this is not a complicated les lesson, but it's just plain and simple, right to the point. This is how you, must, you should behave. If you don't behave then there's consequences behind it. Verse 21, go ahead. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. Uh -huh. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. What? Yeah. I'm going to do this to my enemy? The Lord said do it. Go ahead and read. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, uh -huh. and the Lord shall reward thee. Now you're going to heap coals of fire on his head. Then you might fix him. He come looking for you, to knock his teeth out, and you reach him two, three dollars. Hey, man, you, you know, you, you say you're hungry, go get you something to eat. Mm -hmm. Now, he don't know what to do with you. <laughs> I did this to him, and I did that. What? You might save him from hurting you somewhere in the future. Mm -hmm. But if he ref refused the chain, then God is going to deal with him. That's why I say you heaping coals of fire upon him. You'd be surprised. Sometimes all your enemy need to find out is that 
He is your enemy, but you are not his, that you are not his enemy. That's right. In other words, you know, he is not your enemy. You are his enemy because you made, he made you his enemy. But I'm not your enemy, brother. Yeah. You hungry? Go get you something to eat. That's kind of hard to say if a person been trying to hurt you all the time. That's worse than a fist in the mouth. Proverbs 24, back up to 24, and we're going to read, start at verse 17. 24, and we're going to start at verse 17. 24 and 17. Read it. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, uh -huh. and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Now, you know, so don't, hey, so don't, don't rejoice when your uh, 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 enemy fall, and don't be glad when you see him stumbling. Why? Go ahead. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. The Lord see you rejoicing when your enemy is, is catching it. He going to turn his wrath, he might turn his wrath away from him. Why? Because he might be doing him because of what he did to you. Right. But when you rejoice, when he is having a hard time, you have become him. Now you have become evil. Why should God punish the evil for the evil? You grieve for him. God is working with him. God will finish doing what he's doing to him. But then if you start rejoicing, clapping the hands and stomping the feet, praise God, then God will stop. Because you have become what he is. So why should he punish him for doing something to you and you rejoicing because I'm doing something to him? What you do is leave it alone. Grieve for him. Romans the 12th chapter. Romans chapter 12. Because all I say, sisters and brothers, is think about this. Chew on it. Roll it around in your mind. Because the Lord wants you to do this so you won't hurt yourself. You won't harm yourself. Because when you're doing harm to somebody else, the biggest victim is you. Romans chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 19, 12 and 19. Okay, go ahead. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, uh -huh. but rather give place unto wrath. Uh -huh. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Somebody do something to you, sisters and brothers. Now, if somebody's attacking you, then you defend yourself. But if it's over with, you don't say, well, I'm going to get even with them. And you... Wait and abide your time until you can work on them. Lord said, no, 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 uh-uh. Vengeance belong to me. And believe me, you cannot offend yourself, more, avenge yourself better than God can, can avenge you. Right. Turn them over to God. Yep. He said something about you. Don't turn around and start trying to say something to make them look bad or hurt them. Leave it alone. God will deal with them. Go ahead and read. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger... Feed him. Uh -huh. If he thirst, give him drink. Go ahead. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Now James said the same thing that Solomon said. Paul. Feed him. Feed him. Help him. Go ahead and read. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's what you got to do. Don't let evil overcome you. Somebody done done something to you. Now you're thinking around, you're sitting around, want to get, get evil. Now you, you're getting eviler and eviler because you're devising ways to harm somebody. Now evil have overcome you now. You have become the victim. And the one that you intend to do evil to, they may have repented. God may have forgiven them. Now you're condemning yourself. The evil, sisters and brothers, that you try to commit on somebody else, 
Like the Lord said, the rule of rock up a hill is going to roll back on you. Leave it alone. Galatians, the sixth chapter. Leave it alone. And don't be so easy, so quick to condemn people, sisters and brothers. That's one of the things. We love to condemn people. Don't be so quick. Because the day might come when you stand in the spot of the condemned. Now you're going to want mercy. Don't nobody understand me. Maybe because you didn't bother to understand other people. God is watching us all. He see everything. He see everything. And if we ain't careful, we're going to find ourselves in bad shape or in trouble when the person that we hating going on about the business and, and the Lord is blessing them. We're going to start at verse 3, 6 and 3. Okay, read it. Well, if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And that's what happens when you start running around judging other people. I always have something to say about other people. I always condemn something, uh, uh, condemn other people. He said, "Look, when you then that's when you think you're something, but you ain't nothing in the eyes of God." Go ahead and read. But let every man prove his own work. That's what you need to do. Prove your own works as a servant of God. Don't worry about somebody else's work. Prove your own work. Go ahead. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone uh -huh. and not in another. Now, when you're doing the right thing, then you can rejoice in your righteousness and your well-doing and your good deeds. Instead of running around judging other people. Fix yourself. That's who need to fix it. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't be running around condemning people. St. John chapter 8. St. John chapter 8. See, this is not complicated, sisters and brothers. This is stuff that you need to put on your mind. You need to think about. So you won't mess around and get yourself cut off. And the person that you put the mouth on is going to walk right on in the kingdom. And on judgment, they're going to judge you. It's all that simple. Like I got this one preacher out there. His whole ministry is about debating and trying to make other ministers look bad. I said, if that's the whole ministry, that means you don't have no ministry. Your ministry is about condemnation. Upstaging. Making this minister look, uh-uh, no, uh-uh. You come to me, I will teach you. If you don't want what I have, then I say have a good day. I look good when I make you look bad. I don't climb up the ladder and pass you by. I snatch the ladder down, snatch you down. In other words, I'm big when you are down. Mm -hmm. You don't have no ministry. Verse 1, St. John 8 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Jesus went unto, went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down, and he taught them. Uh huh. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. This is what we was talking about. Brought unto him, to him a woman taken in adultery. Where's the man? Right. Go ahead and read. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Uh huh. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? Uh huh. This they said tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down uh -huh. and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Go ahead. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. So they thought they had it. Now Moses said, you got to stone this woman to death. Yeah, along with the man that committed adultery too. They thought they had him. So Jesus planned... Played around in the dirt, then he said, he that's without sin, let him cast the first stone. 
He didn't say nothing about adultery, did he? Uh-uh. Go ahead and read. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Uh-huh. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, uh-huh. went out one by one, uh-huh. beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. Because they, they know they was wrong. All of them done something wrong. So they was convicted. So they, everyone went out one by one, even the elders that was among them. Go ahead and read. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Uh-huh. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none by the, but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are, thou, where are those thine accusers? Uh-huh. Hath no man condemned thee? Go ahead. She said, No man, Lord. Uh-huh. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I com- condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Look, sisters and brothers, the Lord said, if you break one, you break them all. In order for me to condemn this sister, I have to be perfect. I ain't never committed a sin. If I told you that, I ain't committed a sin. I just committed one because I just lied. So what I have to do? I have to give her room. I caught her doing something. I would tell her, sister, you shouldn't do this. But I can't condemn her. I'm not qualified to condemn her. Just like these guys were not qualified to condemn this woman. They left the man. But even if they had brought him, Jesus, and Jesus asked the same question. He does without sin, let him cast the first stone. Then they would have had to walk away from both of them, wouldn't they? And Jesus would have told them both. I'm not condemning you, but go and sin no more. You see how forgiving the Lord is? He don't want to destroy nobody. He don't want to put nobody in a leg of fire. He wants to save you. He is trying to give you room. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and read it. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge no man. See, he said, you judge after the flesh. But Jesus said, he judged no man. The word of God judges you. See, you look at a fleshly move. You might see somebody do something, and all of a sudden you condemn them, but then there might be some great tragedy in their life that caused them to do this. Once you see that, then you don't stand in judgment. Then you just mourn for them. Because... Too many times we look at the, cause, at the effects, but we don't look at the causes, sisters and brothers. And we're quick to judge, especially if we think we're righteous. Let's look at a situation here. Let's go into Luke, the seventh chapter. Luke, chapter seven. See, this is why, sisters and brothers, I give a lot of people a lot of room. And the only time that I would move against a brother or sister if I come and tell them, don't do this. Like we have some brothers that's running around. We had a couple of brothers I threw out, and I threw out a sister. It's because they want to, the brother want to trade women like shoes. I said, you can't do that. That's fornication. Oh, well, brother, you don't understand. You don't understand. I said, okay, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I do understand. I understand that you can't come up in here no more. You say it all the time, but some of the people get a little squeamish with it. But I say it here. Ain't nobody going to make a whole house out of the Israel of God. Not as long as I'm the head of it. Other people, well, we, Lord said so you can have more than one wife. I can show you what the Lord told Israel when you set a king over to him, over you. I don't want him multiplying horses or multiplying wives to himself. What multiplication mean? More than one. Well, David and Solomon, I said, that's David and Solomon's problem. How do you think God is going to deal with you? It's all that simple. I'm not going to look at this brother here and see him doing stuff that God said don't do and look like God and let him get away with it. He didn't. Look what he did to David's family. He had his daughter, his, his son by one woman, rape his daughter by another. Then that son, the girl's brother, turned around and killed him and drove him out of the kingdom. He paid. And he saw a wall. And he cried and lamented over his son that drove him out of the kingdom. His general Joab said, look, you're making the people feel bad that they wouldn't fought your fight. But Joab didn't understand. David knew what he had done. 
And he knew what God said, he's going to put a sword in his family. You're looking at your children die and suffer. He even had his son take 10 of your concubines, which should not have been in the first place, but still go in the housetop and sleep it all up. You brought this on yourself. That's why David was crying and he grieving. I have killed my children. And how many times I done prayed to the Lord, please don't let my children suffer for my sin. Try to keep from it. What did I say, Luke the 7th chapter? Luke 7, yeah. Because sisters and brothers, one that's over-righteous in his own mind, he will condemn in a minute. Let's show you what, what this, let's look at this Pharisee here. He's supposed to be a religious guy. We're going to start at verse 7 and 36. Luke 7 and verse 36. Because sometimes you just have to look at people and see what their behavior is. So you have an assessment what they what, what you're dealing with. Verse 36, 7 and 36. Okay, read it. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. So the Pharisees, that's one of the religions. These guys, they bleed in the resurrection and all that. That's right. So he went to the guy's house and he sat down to eat. Go ahead. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Uh -huh. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, uh -huh. and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now, so this woman was a sinner in the city. But she came in when she found out Jesus was in this guy's house. She come in there crying. She didn't ask him to forgive or do nothing. She just went to work and doing things to him. She, she was showing him that I am sorry. But keep reading. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, This man, if he was a, were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. He just condemned Jesus and the woman. That's right. This man, if he had been who he said he is, he would know who's messing with him. He don't know what's in Jesus' mind, but Jesus read his mind. What did he say? Go ahead and read. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. Uh -huh. And he said, Master, say on. That's hypocrite. That's hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Master, say on. Right. You just condemned him in your mind, but now he's your master. That's why you have to watch it. Go ahead and read. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. Uh-huh. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell, tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Legitimate question. You got your credit over, credit over here that owe you $10,000, and this one over here owe you $10, and neither one of you had any money, so I'm going to forgive both of you. So which one would love him most? Go ahead and read. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. That's right. Go ahead. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. You rightly judged. You committed one little bit of sin. You ain't thinking, well, I committed a little bit. But you done committed a whole lot of them like I'm guilty of. I tell people that all the time. God knows, so I ain't got to hide it from you. The Lord brought me to where I am and cleaned me up. I am forever grateful. That's why I cry, fly all over the country, uh, all over the uh, uh, states, and drive all over the states. That's why we got camps everywhere. That's why I'm up day and night, up early in the morning in this word, because I know that I have a lot to be forgiven for. So I'm going to love him a whole lot and do all that I can to take care of his business. So that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now what, what does the Lord say? Go ahead and read. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? Uh -huh. I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with, with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Uh -huh. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Uh -huh. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, 
Uh -huh. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. You know, cause we got this hand, we got had to be, had to, we had to put oil on it. <laughs> you know, we had to put oil on it. The other people had to take oil out of their hair and let you know the kind of hair Jesus had. But keep reading. I just had to say that. Keep reading. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Uh -huh. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Say her the forgiver, because she loved much. But I haven't given you much. You, you haven't had much forgiven in you. You don't love me that much. Go ahead and read. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. Thy sins are forgiven. Skip down to verse 50 and read it. Verse 50 and go ahead. And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Your faith hath saved you. She didn't come and ask him, oh, Lord, forgive me, doing a whole lot of praying. And Lord. She just went into action. Let him know I am dirty. Allow me to serve you in whatever way I can. And for that, he forgave her of her sin. I didn't see nowhere where he said to the Pharisee, you forgiven or yours. Because he heard him in his mind when he condemned him and the woman. If he was who he said he was, he would know who's touching him. Not thinking God knew who he, he knew who was touching him. But the whole thing, sisters and brothers, this is self-righteousness. You will condemn other people, but you will not look at your Self. And if somebody's wrong, you have to go out and rebuke them. You shouldn't do it. Why didn't he meet this woman in the streets and tell her, look here, sister, what you're doing is wrong? Mm -hmm. It's obvious she needed somebody to correct her because she came in and did the best she could. If somebody going out there and said, sister, you shouldn't do this, she might have quit on the spot, whatever she was doing. But instead of him going out and correcting, it was easy for him to sit back and condemn her. Luke the 17th chapter. Luke chapter 17. What I'm saying, sister and brother, it is easy to condemn. But you should let it come to the point where it is easy to forgive. Because when you get to the point where it's easy to forgive, then you can stamp servant of God on yourself. Because that's what you have become. Servant of God should not have enemies. So I got people on the internet saying all kind of stuff about me, talking crazy about me. Man out there, you said, where well, your brother boy is worth $3 million personally. I sure wish you'd tell me where it is. He gets how much? How much do I get paid him a, 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 a year? You worth three point nine million dollars. Oh, three point nine, yes. and I get a salary. What is that? It is say what your salary. Somebody is. told me. Some one of the guys told me. He said I made a hundred something. They paid me a hundred something dollars a thousand a year. Because I'm there each every day in the office. I might eat lunch. <laughs> Once I. And what's that little bit of salad with 10 or 12 dollars? And that's it. I said, this is crazy. And people, somebody going to believe that. Bad mouth, bad mouth. But I'm not angry, but I did tell him to find out who he is. You understand? <laughs> so I can tell him about himself. I'm going to tell him, I hope you got 10 million dollars. Why? Because that's what I'm going to sue you for. If you don't stop defaming me. <laughs> and if you don't stop, then I have to praise God to ask me, forgive me for lying. <laughs> 17 and 3. 17 and 3. Okay, go ahead. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And that's what you do. He trespass against you. You're supposed to rebuke him. Look here. This is wrong. You shouldn't do this. Well, I'm sorry. Then you forgive him. All that simple. That's so easy, isn't it? Go ahead and read. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. This is Jesus telling you this. She goes, uh-uh, no, I ain't going now. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh. Make me, you think I'm stupid. 
No, you forgive him, but you put him in a position that he can't hurt you. You understand? But you still forgive him. Because if he keep doing it, he's going to destroy himself. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into Proverbs chapter 29. 29 chapter of Proverbs. Too many times, sisters and brothers, we want to do the work that the Lord said he'll do. Believe me. All these guys out there talking crazy about me, everybody wondering, Brother Boo, why don't you get out there and, and say so? For what? I ain't guilty of nothing that they said about me. The only time I get upset when you accuse me of something is when I'm guilty of it. And I'm not upset at you, I'm upset at me for being in that position. That's the way you're supposed to be. Upset at yourself. Then you turn around and you will fix yourself. And can't nobody fix you but you. Can't nobody condemn you but you. But if your person keeps transgressing against you and he turns around and asks you to forgive him, the Lord said, do it. But if he keep doing it, he will destroy himself. We're going to read one verse, Proverbs 29 and verse 1. 29 and 1. Okay, read it. He, that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck. Uh -huh. shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. The one that has to be often reproved for doing wrong. And he hardened his neck, he said, suddenly he going to be destroyed mm -hmm. and without remedy. In other words, the Lord going to deal with that person. He think he's making a fool out of you, but he's making a fool out of himself. Asking you to forgive him and you forgive him. Then he turn around, he go, yeah, oh, oh, oh. I'm going to try to submit. And he do something else to you. And then, oh, I'm sorry. Then you forgive him. He keep doing it. The Lord's going to deal with that person. I know, sisters and brothers. Because the Lord has dealt with a lot of people that have defamed me. And I never reciprocated one time. All of a sudden, they wives. Oh, come in crying, brother boy, you know, I can't help her. I said, what, what, what do you want me to do, darling? And I help out any way I can. But if I had done something to them, then they'd have been mad at me. But because I didn't do nothing, they come back, and now they're sitting in front of me and learning how to save themselves. And that's what it's all about. This is what it's all about. Because the whole thing is, everybody is perfect in their own mind. Right. Everybody is. So sometimes people smear you and lie on you, and you get angry. But when you get angry, don't sin against God. Sometimes we can't help but to get angry. I get angry sometimes. But you don't sin against God. You have to control it, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians 4. Because these are things that the Lord had written so he would save you from yourself. Because self-righteousness is a disease. And like any other disease, eventually it will kill you. You have to back away from that. Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to start reading at verse 26. Ephesians 4 and verse 26. Okay, go ahead. Be ye angry and sin not. Uh-huh. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. See, now you can't help but get angry sometimes. But what you don't do in your anger, you turn around and take retribution. Then you don't let that anger stay. He said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. What you do is you forget it. That's why I had instances. Me and my brother has a dis dispute, and he says something ugly to me, and we laugh. Come the next one, how you doing, brother? I'm okay. I shake his hand, and I mean it. Ain't angry with it. That was yesterday. 
I didn't do nothing wrong to you, so why am I worried? you the one that did the wrong, therefore you got to worry about it. Why am I angry with you? Go ahead and read. Neither give place to the devil. Uh-huh. So you, if, well, that's what you do. You give place to the devil. Because he got something to work with now. Mm -hmm. He got a tainted mind, an angry man, yep. an angry woman. Mm -hmm. Now he can, well, you know, you were right. You know, you shouldn't let him get away with that. You're having these thoughts. You're thinking you, the thoughts are yours. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. When you open up to Satan, he'll move in. But you have to open up to him. That's right. And one of the ways to open up to him is being angry. angry yeah. Now he's going to move on your emotions. Skip down to verse 31. Verse 31. And go ahead. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you uh -huh. with all malice. Now, and that's what he do. You know, don't, don't deal with that. You don't have to deal with that. Go ahead and read. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. See, and this is the whole thing. What's wrong with being kind to one another? What's wrong with saying something pleasant to somebody? What's wrong with not allowing nobody to bring you into strife or bring you negative conversation about somebody all the time? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Back away from it. No, we don't want to go there. Because uh, when you start getting angry all the time, it controls you, sisters and brothers. And if anger controls you, you have a problem. Let's go to Proverbs 25th chapter. Proverbs chapter 25. Because when anger controls you, you have a problem. Because it's an emotion. And emotion gets out of control. Ain't no telling where you might end up. In my younger days, I've done some stuff I wish I hadn't done when I was angry. Still think about some of them and it grieves me. If I had known better, then I wouldn't have to live with this grief. Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25. And we're going to read one verse. Proverbs chapter 25. And verse 28, 25 and 28. Okay, read it. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Isn't that something? A city that's broken down without wall. When the enemy come in, he can, he can destroy them at will, can't he? So if you don't have no control over your anger, that's your own spirit, then you are broken. You are left open to anything. Satan can assault you. Anybody can assault you. You can be manipulated because they find out you cannot rule your own spirit. Just like a city that's broken down. Can't protect nobody. You have to learn how to control your spirit, sisters and brothers. You have to learn how to control yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to lose this battle. I'm telling you that. And I teach you the book, not what I believe. When we start at verse 11, yeah. 34 and 11. Psalms 34 and 11. Okay, and go ahead. Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Uh huh. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days? Uh huh. That he, that he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Now, if you love a long life and a good life, keep your lips from speaking evil. Don't have nothing to say about nobody. You just leave everything the way it is. Mm -hmm. What verse? 14. Go ahead. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And that's what you were supposed to do. Seek peace. If you got something to say about somebody and it's, and it's not going uh, and, and, uh, uh, to correct it, don't say it. 
If a person do something wrong, you don't tell the next person about them. You go tell them that they did wrong. And tell them, sister and brother, I'm doing this for your own good. But if you're going to take it somewhere else, you're not doing it for their own good. I don't know what you're doing it for, but I know one thing is going to blow back on you. Because there's a little thing that uh, most people don't understand. When you have a person that's always uh, uh, accusing and finding fault, maybe uh, they ain't working for God. Maybe they've been influenced from someplace else. Always accusing, always finding fault. Who is that someplace, uh, who is that person that you might be following instead of God? Let's go find out. This is the last place. Let's go into Revelation, the 12th chapter. Revelation chapter 12. The reason the Lord put this in here is so we can examine ourselves. Because a lot of time we're doing damage to ourselves because we don't control our own conversation. And when somebody always has something to say about something, always correcting somebody, instead of going to the person that have the problem, maybe they are being led by this person. Revelation 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. Revelation 12 and 7. Okay, go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Uh -huh. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Now, so this is when Satan was being thrown out. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan. See, that serpent in the Garden of Eden, that's talking about Satan. It wasn't no snake talking. So he was cast out, that old serpent, and the devil, that old serpent, called Satan, go ahead. Which deceiveth the whole world. Uh-huh. He was cast out into the earth. Go ahead. And his angels were cast out with him. Uh-huh. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. Go ahead. For the accuser of our brethren is the what? cast, the accuser uh -huh. of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God, our God day and night. That's what Satan was. Even before the Lord found iniquity in him, he was up there accusing all the other angels. Every time he turned around, this one done something wrong. This, this. He's an accuser of our brethren day and night. Yep. So if you find yourself a, an accuser, maybe you got a problem. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Uh -huh. woe, unto, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is, for the devil is come down unto you, uh -huh. having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So God kicked him out of heaven because he's an accuser mm -hmm. and always pointing the finger on somebody. But he said, now, woe to the earth. Because he'd have been cast out, the, out of heaven. Now he's among us. Mm -hmm. Be careful that he ain't manipulating you and making you an accuser. Because if he are, if he is, then you might end up in the lake of fire, sister and brother. So help yourself. Show love. Love. Is about keeping God's commandments. And if you love a person, you do what you can to correct them. You don't go out and pull salt on them among other people. You're not hurting anybody. Remember, love, don't sow no discord, and it creates no strife. Love solves problems. I thank you for your time.